This garden behind me was my permaculture food forest garden and I've actually decided to kind of shift that to my front yard because this garden doesn't get as much sunlight and it's kind of a little bit unruly and it's been taken over by sweet potatoes but I am going to work on this garden a little bit and kind of just show you how a permaculture food forest doesn't have to be what we might stereotypically think of when we think of like a food forest as being like this lush tree filled garden that is probably not achievable for us if we don't have a large amount of space available to us. I like to think of permaculture food forests more in terms of a way of building structure, hierarchy and differentiation within a system. A permaculture food forest is a self-sustaining multi-layered garden system that's designed to mimic the structure and function of a natural forest while producing food and other useful resources. It consists of different plant layers such as tall trees, shrubs, herbs, ground covers, root crops and vines that all work together to create a resilient and biodiverse ecosystem. By incorporating principles like soil regeneration, nutrient cycling and companion planting, a food forest requires minimal maintenance over time as it naturally builds fertility, retains moisture and supports beneficial wildlife. This approach maximizes productivity while enhancing ecological balance, making it a sustainable alternative to conventional gardening or farming. So as you can see, the entire ground has been taken over by sweet potato leaves. And I actually trained the vines from here to grow up here. I'm gonna fix this up today, it's a little bit unruly. But the reason I wanted this is because I use sweet potato leaves pretty much every day as like an alternative to spinach or kale and I wanted to be able to just like come out of my door if it's like late at night or early in the morning and just like cut some of these leaves or pick them without needing to like go out into the garden but this is a little bit crazy you can probably see why I chose this to be my food forest garden because even though most of these taller like trees or shrubs aren't edible they still provide the necessary structure and hierarchy for the permaculture food forest. In a permaculture food forest, not every layer needs to consist of edible plants. What matters is that each level is fulfilling its ecological function to create a stable and resilient system. While many people focus on maximizing food production, the true strength of a food forest lies in its ability to mimic natural ecosystems where plants play diverse roles beyond just providing food. Nitrogen fixing trees and shrubs will enrich the soil, dynamic accumulators will draw up nutrients, and ground covers will suppress weeds and retain moisture. Even ornamental or native plants can serve essential functions like attracting pollinators, providing habitat for beneficial insects, or acting as windbreaks and shade providers. By ensuring that each layer has plants fulfilling key ecological roles, whether edible or not, the system becomes more self-sustaining, requiring less human intervention while supporting longer-term productivity and biodiversity. In systems thinking, structure refers to the arrangement and organisation of components within a system and the patterns of interactions that define how the system functions. It encompasses the physical, relational and functional elements that determine the system's behaviour and its capacity to respond to internal dynamics or external changes. The structure of a system dictates the flow of resources, energy and information between its components, shaping processes such as feedback loops, emergent properties and overall system stability. Hierarchy in systems thinking refers to the organisation of a system into levels or strata, where each level plays a distinct role and influences the others. Hierarchical structures are fundamental to understanding how systems maintain order, distribute resources and adapt to changes. In hierarchy, higher levels often govern or provide overarching functions, such as regulation or coordination, while lower levels handle specific tasks or localised processes. Differentiation in systems thinking refers to the diversity of components within a system and the unique roles or functions each component performs. It highlights the importance of specialisation and variety in maintaining the system's adaptability, efficiency and resilience. Differentiation allows systems to distribute tasks across multiple elements, reducing redundancy while fostering complementary interactions. This diversity strengthens the system by creating redundancy in critical functions and enabling adaptation to environmental changes or shocks.
So the canopy layer is the uppermost layer and it consists of large mature trees. So these might be fruit or nut trees in the context of a food forest. And the aim of this level or layer of the food forest is to create shade, regulate microclimates, slow down any wind and protect the lower layers from extreme weather. Their deep roots will often allow them to access subsoil nutrients, which can stabilize the system and contribute more organic matter to the soil through their leaf litter. Then we have the understory, which is sometimes called the subcanopy. And this layer includes our smaller fruit trees. These are often nitrogen fixing species, so things like beans or legumes that will fill the space beneath the canopy without needing to compete with those larger canopy level trees. These are gonna provide additional food production, help to enrich soil fertility, and act as a bit of a transition between those upper and lower layers to maintain the structural complexity of the system. The shrub layer will often consist of things like berry bushes or other mid-sized perennials. And this layer is really important because it can help us to enhance biodiversity and productivity. Shrubs are going to act as a buffer between tree layers and herbaceous plants, offering more habitat for pollinators and beneficial insects while helping to retain soil moisture and prevent erosion. The herbaceous layer is composed of non-woody plants, herbs and vegetables, and this layer plays a really vital role in ground cover and nutrient cycling. Many of the species here are going to be dynamic accumulators, drawing up minerals from deeper soil levels and making them available to the system. This level can also help us to control pests through companion planting. Our ground cover level is those low growing plants like clover, strawberries, or creeping thyme. And these serve as a bit of a living mulch. They reduce soil erosion and suppress weeds and enhance the soil's moisture retention. They help us to really stabilize the system and can help to support soil microbes and fungi that sustain plant health. The rhizosphere or root layer is the below ground layer that consists of root crops and deep rooted perennials that are gonna help us to aerate the soil, break up any compaction and improve drainage. The root layer also interacts with beneficial microbes, facilitating nutrient exchange throughout the system. The vertical layer includes any climbers or vines that are going to utilize vertical space by growing up trees, trellises, or other structures, helping us to increase food production and biodiversity without occupying any additional ground area. They are gonna provide shade, wind protection, and additional biodiversity while integrating with the other layers. By designing with structure, hierarchy, and differentiation in mind, just as in a food forest, even the smallest garden bed can become a self-sustaining ecosystem. When each plant plays a role, from soil enrichment to moisture retention or pest control, we can create a balanced, resilient system that thrives with minimal intervention.